Hi, Vanner Fanner family. So here we are with another product review. So the other product that I have to review, you guys know I've been um, waiting for something for it, is my backup camera. We already did the unboxing, I believe, of this one, so I will try and link it above. But I was waiting for another component to do this setup, and that is the smart battery pack. Because as you know, they sent me the wireless version unlike last year when they sent me the um, wired version. So this time they've sent me the battery the battery pack that connects to the um, actual uh, here it is the actual camera because it's wireless. you can wire it directly to your lights, your reverse lights if you would like but because I'm not going to be doing all that. <laughs> I asked them what other way could this camera work, and they offer a battery pack, which is rechargeable. And let's, sh I'm going to show you the couple of different ways that you can recharge this. Okay, so with the um, power pack here, as you can see, it's fully charged. It came fully charged. I did not charge it. I was actually plugging it in to charge it, and it's fully charged. I got all four lights on. I don't know if you can see that. So with it comes, and I'm going to show you, I don't know why it comes with this short little thing, but it comes with this, comes with two different ways to charge it. So this is a USB to 5 volt. So the 5 volt goes into the back of the battery or into one of the cables of the battery. I'll show you. Okay, so this is your five port, five port, five volt connection. This should be way longer than this if you're going to be, but I guess they're expecting you to charge it, and once it's charged, then you unplug it. I guess that's what they're expecting. Okay, so that's one way to charge it, or it comes with the way that I'm most likely going to use. It comes with the cigarette lighter, which is a lot longer cable. So to me, it makes sense to have them both this long, but you know, hey, that's just me. Again, 5 volt to the cigarette lighter because I do have a port in the back that is a cigarette lighter um, 12 volt plug up in the top in the very, very back, which I don't use for anything at all. So I'll be using that for this situation. And then the other plug on the battery pack. So you've got one 5 volt to plug to charge the battery. Then you've got the one that goes in the back of the camera because this is what's going to give the camera its power. So the other, so it has these two. So you've got the, this is the battery, the rechargeable battery. This is the power of the battery to charge it. And then this is to add to the camera that's going to go in the back. Now, that is very short. Look at it. How do they expect you to put... <laughs> this camera on the outside of your van with this little cable where exactly is that going to go on the outside of my van it's not going to go anywhere so they have already determined for me that the camera will have to be on the inside of the van there's nothing i can do about it nothing there's nowhere for me to put this on the outside with this short cable i don't have an extender i don't have anything that is not even a foot that's not even a foot of cable so I don't know how they expect you to mount this camera on the outside. So clearly this is going to have to sit in my back window. So if you're legit trying to do this, I don't know how they expect you to, to do that. I, I just don't understand. I'm going to plug in the monitor into my cigarette lighter in the front, which is where it will go. This is the monitor. This is the part that I would use. As you can see, it's got the suction cuppy. So I'm going to go ahead and suction cup in it. Suction cup it. Um, another thing I will say that's a negative so far is this joint here. I have tightened this little nut up as much as it will tighten, and it is very loose, very, very loose. So um, this part right here is way too loose. That's another negative about this. Um, as you can see, it just, it just kind of moves all over the place, so that's not cool. 
not feeling that at all. So that's something that the company definitely needs definitely needs to work on is getting that um because you put the little ball inside, but it doesn't go far enough inside to make this really tight. It just does not. It's it's not a very tight fitting situation. So that's something they might want to work on. Upgrading is the um because when you're driving and you're hitting bumps, you don't want your monitor to be bouncing all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to tighten it back on. But yeah, it's quite loose. Quite, quite loose. So I'm going to go ahead, <clears throat> stick this up here. It's going to go right above my rear view mirror, I think is the best place for it. Okay, I have everything all set up. As you can hear, there's an echo because I've got the um, monitor turned on. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So you can see me in this monitor. Hello. So that's what the monitor looks like. I'm holding the camera obviously in my hand. There's an echo because this also has sound. So I'm gonna turn that sound down. So as you can see, I am in the camera. I've turned the volume down a little because this camera does have sound, it records. So I'll be able to, um, not that I need to hear anything because the camera is going to be inside the van. So I don't need to hear my music over the uh, monitor or anything. So I'll probably be muting that. However, if I want to take this monitor and bring it in the back and turn the camera on at night, I can do that when I'm camped somewhere and I'm stealth parking. I can hear any sound in the back of the van or wherever the camera is facing. So that might be a good feature to have as well. So that's just good for sound. You can hear people talking around your van. You can hear um, wherever the camera is pointing to, you'll be able to see them as well. So that might be a feature to use for someone who needs that feature. I most likely am not gonna be moving the camera to a different location or bringing the monitor to the back to monitor at night. I don't normally do that. I didn't do that with the other camera, so I'm probably not gonna do that with this. I believe, and, and I will definitely check that information, but I believe you can have three or four cameras total on this system wirelessly connected because it does say um, camera one, camera two, camera three, and camera four in the settings. So I believe that if you put a camera on every space, like one on the left side, one on the right side, one in the back, and one in the very front, you could have full feature and that would make for a great um, security feature for you. But since I'm using this as my rear view mirror, I'm most likely not going to move it. However, I could just take the monitor component and throw it in the back with me when I'm camping and see who's behind my van. So I'm gonna go get in the back of the van. Oh, I forgot to turn this camera off, hold on. Turn the monitor off rather. I'm gonna go sit in the back of the van and figure out where I'm going to mo uh, mount this camera. So I will say that the camera is quite warm and it is not hot right now outside. I'm doing this really early in the morning. So, well not really early, it's not even nine o'clock. But um, the temperature in the van, even with the windows up, is really very mild. But this camera is getting quite warm. So I'm assuming this power pack must put out quite a bit of um, juice because this camera is like hot, it's hot. So I'm gonna go find a place to mount this in the back and to mount this as well so that it can have its um, power. Okay, so I took the two screws out of my rear um, brake light here to lift this component up a little because it looks like I will be able to mount it outside and I'm gonna do something I said I would never do and that's make holes in my top. So I turned this camera around on its bracket so that this inner gap that would go on the license plate can go up under this lip. So I'm going to put two screws in the holes that go for the um, license plate mounting and I'm going to slip this cord in through the rubber gasket so that it can go to the charging battery um, inside which will be inside this will definitely have to be adjusted since my car is a high top my van is a high top I'll have to adjust this camera but we'll take a ride a little bit later and get the adjustments right for that 
So I think this will work. So I'm gonna put two screws under this lip and then when I put the screws back in this, it will tighten down on top of the bracket as well. So it should be okay. So I've gotta find the right screws to screw this in. So I do have the screws that came with the setup. And there are some self-tapping screws in here, but they are short. So I'm going to see if they're going to work. <clears throat> they're a little short. Um, they might be shorter than what I need. And they also have some rubber washers as well. So I'm going to put those behind. Um, so we'll see. Let's get one in place and see what we've got going on. So I'm thinking if I put the metal washer over the hole and then put the screw, actually they're not rubber washers, they're plastic, put the rubber, put the screw on the plastic washer it came with and mount it like this. I don't know if you can see that. I've got the sun facing the wrong direction <clears throat> where I'm parked. But I'm thinking this, this might work, having it like that. So we're going to put one in and see. Hopefully I can get this centered. I'm not measuring. I'm freehanding this. I'm just kind of using this as my line where the two doors close as the center. So we'll see. As a matter of fact, I think I'll close the second door so I can use that as a better gauge. putting the um, this middle the camera right in the middle of the crack there so let me scoot you over so you don't get a, a butt shot those are never cool <laughs> I don't think they're cool some of you guys enjoy them <laughs> do the second one and come back and show okay, you the finished so it's up there now I got the two screws back in this now if you noticed while I was doing this before I noticed this one screw cannot be as high as this screw reason being is I could not get this completely off while the camera is in front of it so this screw is a little bit shorter but it is in there and then these two screws are keeping the plastic down so all of that together, it should not be going anywhere and no water should be getting in. Fingers crossed. So again, that allows for me to tuck this cable into here. It's completely covered by rubber and the other door has rubber on it as well that touches this rubber so we should be good to go so now let's move inside and put the battery power pack inside okay so I'm back inside so it's gonna be kind of hard for me to show you where I'm putting the power pack because it's a little bit dark but I'll do my best um, it's just dark back here it's daylight outside obviously but back here because you know I have the curtains and everything it's a little bit dark so I'm gonna show you where the 12 volt plug that charges this uh, is located in my van. I will not leave this plugged in while I'm not driving because um, the 12 volt plug will draw power and so that will kill my starter battery. At, at some point, I'm going to pull that 12 volt socket out and I'm going to um, take the wires and wire it um, down by the window into my house battery so it's on a separate house battery and then put it back in the location it's in but right now it's hooked up into the system of the van which um, it uses my starter battery so for right now that's something that um, I'll only plug it in when this power pack needs to be charged and as I showed you it's completely full right now and uh, so I don't need to do anything with it until it's time for me to turn it on to use the actual um, camera so which is something I'll have to remember to do because if you think about it, when I go to drive, I'm going to have to come back here, turn this power pack on in order to power my camera 
because the camera will not have power unless that pa unless this power pack is turned on. So I think I can mount the power pack pretty much right here. So in the course of messing with this, I just realized that this whole bag is magnetized. Um, it looks like it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight heavy duty magnets on it. And this bar that is hanging my clothes is metal. And so it looks like that might work. So that's kind of cool. I wish I had some metal over here, but I do not. There's nothing, everything has got, um, you know, a carpet, that fuzz on it, carpet on it. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go ahead and um, put a zip tie around, around the pole so that it's magnetized. Um, so it'll be magnetized, and even though it's not, you know, because the pole is round and it's kind of thin, but it will give it an anchor, something to anchor it to. So I think I'm gonna do that. So that's pretty cool to know that this is metal. Um, I don't know if this was meant to be on the outside or not. I don't know why you would put this on the outside with your camera because that could easily be stolen. So I would never, I would never put it outside. But maybe that's what it's supposed to be. Maybe it's supposed to go outside. I don't know. Again, I would not do that because I feel like somebody would just come by and pull it off. It would, you know, easily. You're just inviting theft, in my opinion. All right. So that's not gonna go anywhere. And then again, the port for the um, camera is right there. So I'll just have to still remember that this has to be turned on in order to power that camera. That camera's getting no power without that being turned on. And now the cigarette lighter plug, this cable is actually too long. So the other, the, the cable that I need to be this long is not this long. This cable is actually too long. So I'll tuck it behind this um, here. Because my cigarette lighter port, I'll show you. you. You can't see it, but you'll see me plug it in. I'll plug it in just so you can see for now. My cigarette lighter port is right here in the ceiling. And I'm going to turn this on. Hopefully you can see it behind the frog. Do you see that red light? I don't know if you can tell. Let me zoom you in a little. So that red light, it's on right now, and then it's off. So on, and as you can see when it's on, this shows that it's charging. See that blue light is blinking, so it's charging. So it's all the way charged pretty much. And so when I turn it off, it stops because the power is off. But I'm going to actually unplug it and as you can see, this is super long. Like, I don't need this much cable. It could have stopped, you know, it could have been about 13 to 18 inches maybe, and it would have been fine. So I'm going to gather some of this up since it's just way too long. Perfect. And we're going to put a Velcro on it. I have some random Velcros that I get wherever I can find them. Dollar Tree, um, Harbor Freight, places like that. I always just find ran random Velcro. It's good to have Velcro strips, you know, the kind cable, cable, cable ties or, well, cable ties or zip ties, but cable um, Velcro is great to have around. So I'm going to take that, and I think that's long enough, and I'm just going to leave it hanging in this, um, I think I'll hang it in the window here, on the back curtain. It's just hanging in the back curtain right there. So when I need to plug it in, bam, it's right there, plugged in, boom. I was going to drape it over here with the clothes, but I moved the clothes around a lot. I'm, you know, not currently 100% in the van, but... When I am in the van, I do move the clothes around a lot, so I don't want to be, you know, every day I'm looking for an outfit or what have you, so I don't want to be messing with that. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on, and we're going to go up to our monitor up front and take a look at what's going on there. 
and then we'll take a quick little drive um, up the street and back so I can see where that camera is facing so when cars are behind me while I'm driving I can see if it's lined up just right so let's do that and that'll be the end of this review okay so I'm looking at the monitor and it's hard for me to tell because where I'm parked I'm parked um, in front of a building so I'm just gonna take a drive um, up the road and then I'll pull over at like the bank parking lot because by then there should be one or two cars behind me and then I can adjust it up or down I'm thinking it might be okay where it is but um, let's just take a drive and see and I'm going to turn you so that you can see the actual monitor while I'm driving all right, there's the monitor so far, and we're gonna take off. I'm hoping that you can see this because it's gonna be hard for me to watch the um, cellular camera and see what you can see while I'm driving. So hopefully when the sun changes, the lighting changes, everything will still be okay and visible for you. So right now we're leaving out of the parking lot. Now, as you can see, those guidelines for backing up into a parking space are there. I'm thinking that I may go into the menu options to see if I can remove those. I believe you can, because I believe I had them removed in the wired version that I had in Cardinal. So, pretty sure that it should work speed limit here is only 25 there's a car coming up behind me yeah it looks good to me I hope you guys can see that as long as I can see the vehicle behind me that's really all that matters I believe you can adjust those lines as well so I'll try backing up into a parking space and using the menu to see um, about adjusting those lines but I honestly don't believe I need the lines when bar parking into a space because I can see the actual parking space lines. Okay, we're at a red light, which is perfect, so I can see what it looks like when he gets right behind me at this red light. Yeah, it's perfect. So the centering of it went well. So this is my rear view mirror since I cannot use my other rear view mirror because of the stuff that's, you know, hanging in the back window. So, um, two things I have to remember to do is, as I said before, I have to turn on that camera in the back. I have to power it through the power pack. Now remember, you don't have to do that if you um, decide to hook yours up directly to your brake lights or to your actual lights. Like I could have attached that somehow to my actual lights, the lights that I put the camera on. I could have taken the two wires that came with the camera uh, originally and just attached them to the lights, which means that I would have to turn my lights on in order to um, have it work. All right, let's back up into this parking space here. And as you can see, I can see it. I can see that parking space very well. I'm not using those guidelines, they're confusing. I'm using my side mirrors. Oh, I've got a tree here, <laughs> which is probably not the best place to park. Let's park in a different slide over some because I do have a, um, I do have my solar panel up here too. So I don't want to scratch up my solar panel with the tree branches. So let's move over one where we're not so close to the tree branches. So like I said, I'm using my side mirror here to get in the white line. There we go. But at least now I can see behind me when there's a pole. Like, see there, there's a pole there. And I would not be able to see that otherwise. So now I can see. All right. So we're parked. 
And I think that that um, is at the right angle for me. I feel like that was at a good angle. And I think I'm going to leave it exactly where it is now when I take a more um, extensive drive. When I get maybe uh, on the highway, it may look differently and I can adjust it later. But I think right now that seemed like a pretty decent angle for the uh, backup camera. So the two things that I have to remember to do before using this system, before even taking off to drive, which a lot of times I'm sure I will completely forget, just because nothing is accessible from right here in the front. Uh, only one feature is. So I'm going to try and look for a cable extension for that battery pack to bring it up front here so that I can turn that camera on and off up here. It makes no sense for it to be back there with that short cable. That just all, um, completely baffles me. It just completely blows my mind. So the two things I have to remember to do are the cable that goes to the monitor that I'm using as my rear view mirror, that has to be plugged in. So I'm going to have to get a double 12 volt cigarette lighter plug to put in my one cigarette 12 volt plug because I only have one cigarette lighter. The cool thing about um, Cardinal was Cardinal had two 12 volt plugs in the front. This van does not. So I'm either going to have to um, wire up a separate one or I'm just going to have to get one that plugs into this cigarette lighter and has the two, you know, has the two. And I can easily find one on Amazon. As a matter of fact, when I'm done with this video, I would probably go look for one. So that, that way that's plugged in all the time. And I have my second 12 volt for my other items that I use, like my cell phone when I'm using my GPS and stuff like that. The other thing I need to remember to do until I get an extender is every time I get ready to take a trip, I need to go back there and turn that battery on. And when my trip is done, I have to remember to turn that battery off or it's going to just be on the whole time. And I don't want that. And thank you, Halo View, for sending me this backup camera. Um, I do like the system. However, I feel like, honestly, the wired system that I put in Cardinal was much easier because everything was accessible from the front. The wires were extremely long. And I just feel like, to me, that system was wor it worked better. Everything ran off of one power plug and... Easy peasy. You don't have to worry about a signal. If I lose signal, I don't know what it's going to look like in the mountains. Are these going to be able to talk to each other? I don't know. Um, obviously, right now, just around town, it's it's an easy thing. But I feel like the wired system was way easier than this wireless system. Plus the fact that that cable is so short that now I've got to go back there and turn that on and off each time I take a trip. And when you're running errands during the day, that's not something you want to be doing. So that's kind of a pain in the butt as well. So um, for those reasons, I would say, um, you know, maybe if you have the capability of wiring up directly to your lights, that probably makes more sense. But that's not something I wanted to get into, having it put into my um, electrical system, especially since I just got my parking lights working. I don't want to mess with anything electrical in this vehicle um, to mess that up. So those are my only downfalls for this wireless system. So... The coupon code is down below. It's only available on this wireless system. So I'll definitely give you that, the link to it. Everything's down in the description box, so don't forget to look for that. So thanks for um, taking this time to watch this long review video. Thank you for continuing to watch all of the videos while I'm on hiatus, and I will see you guys next time. If you would like to support my channel during this hiatus, check out the journey from day one through now or check out one of the other playlists available. Thanks for watching.